Okay, if not, we shall move on to the next talk. Um, Dr. Claudio, are you? Wonderful. I'd like to introduce um, Professor Claudio Casado from the University of Turin in Italy for your presentation. And thank you for joining us at such an ungodly hour for you. Good morning. My name is Claudio Castardo from the Department of Physics of the University of Torino. I will present the work performed with my collaborators. Title is Climatology of Sun Surface Layer and Soil Variables in Northern Italy using Land Surface Model Utopia. Recently, the importance of surface layer processes, specifically energy and hydrological budgets, was recognized by the scientific community also for climate. Since observation don't allow to create a climatological database, it is possible to use the outputs of a trusted land surface model as a surrogate. In this work, we have analyzed some fundamental variables in the surface layer and in the soil using the Utopia model which I will present uh, later. And uh, the domain involved uh, most of the Alps region and the Italian po, po Valley. The Utopia outputs were also compared uh, with the output of the NOAA multiphysic land surface models. This is the Utopia model, University of Torino model of land process interaction with atmosphere. The domain can be considered separated in three different layers, the atmosphere above the vegetation, the layer including the vegetation, and the soil. Vegetation and soil are described by several parameters. Here they are listed for vegetation and here they are listed for the soil. Regarding the snow, the model considers the single layer approximation. The observation to drive the model uh, need data every hour at least. Data are temperature, humidity, pressure, and the wind, cloud cover, long wave and short wave radiation, and precipitation. Uh, we have extracted the data from the Global Land Data Assimilation System. Uh, which is a database uh, produced by NASA, GSFC, NOAA, and NCHEP. Two versions are available. We have used the version 2.0 because uh, it contains a very large database in time from 1948 to 2014. The time resolution is 3 hours. The space resolution is 0.25 degree in latitude and longitude. And we have uh, um, interpolated the, the data in order to have a temporal rate of about of 30 minutes. This is the domain we are using that contain the Alps here and the Po Valley region that is uh, this uh, plain in the North Italy. And this is the number of grid that we have considered in this study. We have run utopia of every land grid. Uh, output data of Utopia are several, but we have considered just uh, this one, net radiation sensible and latent flux and conductive flux for the energy budget, precipitation, evapotranspiration and surface runoff for the hydrological budget, soil temperature and the moisture in the first uh, uh, 5 cm of soil for describing the soil values. Uh, in this uh, domain, this uh, soil texture type uh, were uh, been considered, and uh, this uh, type of land use uh, has been considered. Here there is uh, the distribution of uh, all these vegetation types which contain uh, forest, short grass, uh, crops, uh, and uh, mixed uh, uh, vegetation. And uh, considering elevation, soil texture and vegetation type, we have been able to group uh, the grid points in, uh, into 18 classes, uh, in which uh, the first six uh, refer to plain areas, uh, 
the classes from 10 to 18 refer to the medium mountain and the classes from 7 to 9 refer to high mountain. In the following I will uh, just show you some result because it's impossible to show all the results. Regarding the soil layer discretization, we have considered the several soil layers. For a total soil depth of 13 meters, we have used a so large soil depth because we were considering simulation for a very long time. Uh, initial values have been calculated using this formulation in which soil temperature and soil moisture depend on observation of air temperature and the relative humidity. These uh, are the main results. In this graph, uh, black line indicates net radiation, uh, green line uh, indicates latent heat flux, uh, red line uh, sensible heat flux, uh, and blue line uh, conductive heat flux. Uh, in the left, we have uh, two grid points uh, corresponding to plain area and the loam soil. In the uh, right part, we have uh, mountain in the top uh, and high mountain in the bottom. Uh, generally, we can see that uh, net radiation maximum occur in summer, as well as uh, latent heat flux maximum, but uh, usually in a plane, a latent heat flux is anticipating the maximum of net radiation, while in a high mountain, the latent heat flux maximum is uh, occurring 10 days later than the net radiation maximum. Uh, here it is very evident the effect of the snow cover, so the flux remain uh, near zero for all the spring and start increasing since uh, April in uh, medium mountain and since uh, May in uh, high mountain. Conductive with flux is uh, always uh, small in the plain, while in the mountain and high mountain there is uh, the peak corresponding to the snow melt. This is a hydrological budget in the same grid point of the previous one. P, black line, is precipitation, ETR, red line, is uh, evapotranspiration, and surface runoff it, is the blue line. In the plain, it is possible to see that uh, the maximum of precipitation occurs generally in uh, autumn, while in mountain and high mountain, the maximum of precipitation occurs in summer. Uh, regarding evapotranspiration, it is ex exceeding precipitation in the plain during summer and uh, never in the mountain and high mountain. Surface runoff is following precipitation in the plain while in mountain and high mountain there is a very large peak in the period in which there is a snow melting. Of course uh, the peak is uh, later in high mountain because snow melting occurs later. This is uh, soil temperature at 5 cm, still in plain left mountain, high mountain in the right. Generally speaking, we can see that uh, in the plain uh, there is the typical annual cycle with uh, the maximum in uh, summer and the minimum in winter, while in mountain and high mountain also, but uh, during the spring uh, there is a very large period in which temperature is almost uh, constant and for four and or five months, uh, temperature remain very close to zero degree, even in our high mountain. This is the protection effect of, of the snow. Uh, this is uh, soil moisture. Actually, it is volumetric soil moisture content, uh, cubic meter of uh, water per cubic meter of soil. Uh, also in this case, uh, there is the typical annual cycle in the plain with uh, the minimum in late July. And this value is quite close uh, to, the, to the wilting point, uh, actually. Uh, for this kind of vegetation, it's uh, not so close to the wilting point. Uh, in the mountain and high mountain, the behavior is uh, more complicated because uh, there is a very large peak which correspond to the maximum value in spring, just immediately after the beginning of the snow melting. Uh, in summer, there is a secondary peak 
in July corresponding to the absolute minimum in the plane, but there is uh, another uh, peak in, in the autumn which is more evident in high mountain and perhaps is due to the melting of the first snow in the next uh, winter season. Uh, during winter the value is uh, the smallest both in, in mountain and high mountain but uh, is not uh, going to zero and this indicates uh, that uh, the soil moisture is not uh, freezing during winter time. Also this is uh, an evidence of the protecting effect of the snow. Uh, now I will show some results about uh, the comparison of uh, Utopia simulation with uh, the NOAA simulation. NOAA data are contained directly in the GLDAS database. So we have just extracted and compared. I show uh, just one grid point uh, so the average of uh, corresponding to the soil type number 8, which is clay loam. Uh, this is for energy budget. Generally, if we compare the two simulations, we can see that uh, the time trend of net radiation is quite similar, but uh, NOAA value are a bit larger than Utopia values. Uh, regarding latent and sensible heat flux, there is the largest difference, especially in July, because for Utopia, in July there is a secondary minimum of latent heat flux, while sensible heat flux is increasing very much, and uh, during this month the two values are quite similar. While for NOAA, uh, latent heat flux is always larger than sensible heat flux, and the maximum of sensible heat flux is occurring in August. The value is about 50 Watt per square meter compared to about 70 watt per square meter of the maximum for Utopia. Uh, conducting with flux is quite similar among the two model simulations. Anyway, considering the variability of the, the simulations in the different grid point, we have uh, considered the average of 100 grid point for making these uh, values we can say that uh, the two values of the two models are compatible. This is for soil temperature and the moisture, and uh, generally speaking, soil temperature is quite similar, but for Utopia there is a two degree, uh, the soil is two degree warmer with respect to Noah in summer. Regarding soil moisture, also the behavior is similar, but uh, in Utopia there is a difference in spring, because uh, Utopia soil moisture is uh, smaller than NOAA soil moisture in spring, while in summer Utopia value is uh, larger than NOAA value. NOAA value arrived to 0.22 meter, cubic meter per cubic meter, while uh, uh, Utopia simulation arrived 0.26. So in spring uh, uh, it's drier and in summer it's moister, Utopia mm -hmm. with respect to NOAA. In the mountain and the high mountain, hi, here I show the result for high mountains. The difference is uh, a little bit larger because uh, mm, NOAA value for net radiation sensible and latent flux are larger. Uh, also, uh, the, there is a big difference for Utopia between latent and sensible heat flux in summer and in the remaining season they are quite similar, while for NOAA the difference is small in summer, but the value are a little bit larger. Compare the maximum of sensible heat flux about 30 watt per square meter with the maximum 60 watt per square meter of sensible heat flux for NOAA. Regarding conductive heat fluxes, this is larger in uh, Utopia with respect to NOAA, and uh, the timing is uh, quite similar, the timing of the maximum. Uh, regarding soil value, also here there is a similarity for soil temperature, but uh, Utopia is uh, 2 degree warmer than NOAA in summer, while for soil moisture there is the largest difference between, because uh, NOAA has uh, just a, a single maximum in spring, and in the remaining part of the seasons uh, uh, the value are quite constant, while for Utopia mm, the value are around 0 0.26 uh, cubic meter per cubic meter for all the years with two 
maxima in spring and autumn and two minima in winter and summer. Uh, as a conclusion, in this work we have uh, evaluated the climatic value of energy and hydrological budget components using the model Utopia and considering 18 different classes of land use, vegetation cover and the soil texture. Thank you very much, Dr. Oh, sorry, Professor um, Casado. Does anyone have questions for Casado? We can um, take two questions. We've got just time for two questions. I'll ask one if no one else is. I was wondering, um, Professor Claudio, sorry, Casado, I'm sorry. Um, uh, what are the next steps for um, for for your research? Uh, where where are you going to take this information? Uh, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Yes. Okay. So uh, we decided to make this analysis because uh, uh, we would like to have a database uh, useful also to compare. Uh, uh, output of climate models in present climate because uh, sometimes climate models have uh, some deficiency so we need uh, a solid database uh, to assess uh, the performance of climate models already in the present climate so this is uh, I think the usefulness of this uh, research because uh, for many quantities like uh, energy and hydrological budget, there is no observations, no long time series of observation for climatic purpose. So this is uh, our goal. Thank you. Thank you very much. Does anyone else have a, um, a question for the professor? Okay, thank you very much, um, Professor Casado. That was a really interesting presentation.